So in this video, we're going to be looking at a slightly different problem than we did in the last one. And in this case, we don't have a stationary object or system anymore. We have one that's accelerating. So that's going to be the difference. And so in this case, we have a man pushing a crate up a rough slope. So that tells us we need to take into account friction. We have motion along an incline. So we know we're going to have a tilted coordinate system. If it was moving along the ground and the man was applying a force at an angle, we wouldn't have a tilted coordinate system because the motion would be in the direction of a non-tilted coordinate system. But in this case, we are having motion up an incline. So we want to tilt our coordinate system so that it matches the motion of the incline. So how many forces do we have? Well, we have an applied force upwards in the positive x direction. We know that we have friction that we got to take into account. And that friction always opposes the direction of the motion. So what is the direction of the motion? Well, we're told that the crate is accelerating up the slope. So the direction of the motion must be in the positive x direction. So we know we're going to have a frictional force that's opposing this applied force pointing down the slope. We have a mass, so we obviously have a weight force that's going to be pointing straight downwards. Since we have a tilted coordinate system, much like the last problem, we are going to have a weight force that is pointing not entirely in the y direction. So we're going to have components in both the y and the x direction. And then finally, we have a normal force acting on the crate from the sloped incline. And that is pushing on the crate perpendicular to the surface. And that's in the positive y direction. So what do we know about the sum of the forces at this point? Because that's ultimately what determines how we draw the length of our force vectors. Well, as we said earlier, we know we have an acceleration in the positive x direction up the slope. From Newton's second law, we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction must point in the positive x direction. So we know we need a net force or a net length for our force vectors in the positive x direction. So we're going to have to take into account all of our components and make sure that the ones that are pointing positive end up having a net length in that direction so that they overcome the negative x direction forces. What about the y direction? What do we know about the sum of the forces in the y direction? Is the crate moving up and down off the slope? So is it moving in the y direction at all? And the answer to that is no. The crate is staying on the slope and it's just being pushed upwards in the, in the x direction. So we know that the acceleration in the y direction must be zero. So we must have a net force in the y direction totaling to zero. So all the positive forces must balance all of the negative forces. So the lengths must be equal in the positive y direction compared to the negative y direction. So now that we have a game plan, we can go ahead and get started by drawing our forces. So the first force that I always like to draw is the weight force or the force due to gravity. That's pointing straight down. And so we're gonna move that at an angle and it points straight down. And much like before, we're just going to choose a length and we're going to base our other lengths on that force. And we're basing that length knowing that we need to have the sum of the forces in the x direction be positive 
and the sum of the forces in the y direction be zero. So the next force I'm gonna draw is the force, applied force, or I'm gonna do the frictional force, it really doesn't matter. You can do the frictional force or the applied force. I'm just going to choose the frictional force first. It's gonna point in one, oh man, sorry about that. That should be gravity, that should be pointing down. Should have added a new force to get the frictional force. That's going to be pointed at 180. And since we know we're moving up the slope, we're just gonna make this a little smaller. At this point, the length, we don't know how long to draw this frictional force. Because we don't have enough information, we don't know a coefficient of friction or anything like that. So we're just going to make it some length and what we're going to do is we're going to take into account the components when we draw our applied force, which will be the next force. So we've got an applied force that's acting in the positive x direction. And so how do we need to draw this applied force based off of what we've already drawn? So we know we have a frictional force in the negative x direction. Do we have any other forces at this point in the negative x direction? So you should be answering yes, we do. And this is again, a big reason of why you wanna draw components on your free body diagram for forces that are acting at an angle. Because it makes it a little more clear to see if it's already drawn. So you have a negative y component of weight and then you draw your x component towards the tip of the vector. And so that's going to be pointing in the negative x direction. So the weight force, the x component of that weight force is going to be pointed in the negative x direction. So what do we know the applied force, know about the length of the applied force vector? Well, we know that the sum of the forces in the x direction must be positive. We have a positive acceleration in the x direction. So we know the net force must be positive as well. So we know that the applied force must be drawn longer than the sum of the x component of the weight force and the frictional force. I also noticed that my label is wrong. We are moving relative to the surface. So we have kinetic friction. Whenever something sliding along a surface, that's always going to be kinetic friction. So that's F sub K. And so that's another spot where you could get it wrong in expert TA if the label is not correct. Anyways, going back to how long should we draw our applied force vector? So that should be longer than the X component of weight and the kinetic frictional force. So we make it longer until the calculator down here becomes positive. And so all I would be looking for is, does your X component of weight and your kinetic frictional force or your frictional force, does that look shorter than your applied force up the ramp? If the answer to that is yes or pretty close, then you're good in terms of writing it on your paper for exams or, or um, homework problems and whatnot. But if it's clear that the frictional force is pretty much the same size as the applied force, then I would mark something like that wrong because we know that we need a net force in the positive x direction. 
Now we are finished with the x direction forces. We just need one more force, which is the normal force. That's acting perpendicular to the surface in the positive y direction. How long do we draw this force vector? What do we need to do? And so this is pretty much identical to the last problem. So you should be thinking to yourself, well, we know what the net force is in the y direction, it's zero. So we know that any force in the positive y direction must be the same length as any all the forces in the negative y direction. We only have one force in each, so their lengths must be the same. So on your paper, you would draw the length of the normal force vector, the same length as the y component of the weight. And so if it's clear that those are pretty similar, then you're going to get it marked correct. In this case, in expert TA, what you're looking for is the sum of the force calculator down here in the y direction to equal zero. So here it's going to be positive. If you really take it out, and then down it's negative, so it's somewhere in here of zero. The one thing that I'll be looking for in your problems or on your paper FBDs is whether the normal force vector, again, is shorter or longer than your weight force vector. So it needs to be drawn shorter than your weight force vector because the normal force is equal to the y component of the weight, magnitude wise. And that y component can never be greater than the overall vector because you're using Pythagorean theorem, so you're adding your components together to get you a bigger number, adding the squares of your components together to get the bigger number. And so this is the process. Again, every all the length of the vectors, it seems like a lot, because, but it starts to become second nature. Um, you automatically start by thinking about, okay, what is the acceleration in this problem? What's the acceleration in the x direction? What's the acceleration in the y direction? From there, you ask yourself, okay, I know what the net force must be in each of those directions because that must point in the same direction as acceleration. And then from there, you want to break up any, any vectors that are acting at an angle into its components. That way you can deal with just the x direction and then just the y direction and make sure all the lengths of the vectors are consistent. So let's finish up this problem by hitting submit and let's see if we're correct. We're good. So hopefully this video helped. Again, I tried to give you an idea of, of what I would be looking for. It doesn't need to be exact. Again, I'm just looking for certain things that tell me whether or not the vectors are drawn relatively correct. Meaning that when something should be shorter than another vector, it is.